what is software engineering basically software engineering is the techniques used when we are developing a software product okay that's software engineering and there are four steps first one is specification what a product you are developing and development process we will design and program the product and validation we will check with the customer that the product which you are developing is correct or not and evolution means with time you will upgrade the product to keep up with the requirements of the customer and there are some fundamentals like the uh, before developing the product should be well understood so that the expected product will be developed and it should be reliable and dependable and should provide security means that data should be not uh, lost easily and the last one is it should make uh, good use of the existing resources the question is to explain the software engineering code of ethics okay if they ask for four marks you have to mention these four points if they ask for eight marks you have to mention ieee code of ethics as well okay so let's uh, discuss this the first one is confidentiality you have to respect the confidentiality of the customers okay and the second one is competence means what work you can truly do that only you should accept you should not make uh, false statements about your capabilities third one is intellectual property right means you uh, should be aware of the local laws and the copyright issues the fourth one is you should not misuse your computer by using your skills that's the uh, software engineering ethics and if they ask for eight marks you have to include this um, the first one is public means whatever a product you are developing should be useful to the public there should be no conflicts between the uh, client and the employer whatever product you are developing should be the best possible product of your capability and the fourth one is judgment you should be fair enough with the customer in uh, judgment and management you should manage the uh, needs of your customer and organize your product and profession whatever profession you are working at in whichever field you are working at you have to give your best colleagues we have to be fair enough and supportive of our colleagues and self means uh, we should uh, participate in the lifelong uh, lifelong learning of the um, software engineering techniques and promote an ethical approach to the practice okay the question is what are the attributes of a good software see uh, the product characteristics the first one is maintainability means the product should be maintainable it should uh, not uh, cause a lot of investment of time and energy to know what the product is and uh, everything should be organized in it okay that's maintainability the second one is dependability and security since these times a uh, lot of uh, data is being stolen and lost the best software product is the one which uh, which is dependable and it, and it has security efficiency you have to use the resources efficiently and it should not cause the uh, wastage of resources acceptability means whatever product you are developing should be accepted by the public and it should be of a use to them what are the key challenges facing software engineering first one is increasing diversity since there are many people having different views about the product and uh, their interest the successful software engineering is the one who uh, takes into consideration all those issues from different people and makes a product which fulfills the needs of majority of the people the second one is demand for the reduced delivery times means the product uh, which you are developing should be quick enough and it should give the results as fast as possible the last one is developing trustworthy software means it should provide the security for the data with a neat diagram explain the insulin pump control system starting from here what is insulin pump it uh, simulates the operation of the pancreas means it uh, pumps the insulin in the Uh, patient's body by measuring the sugar level okay first it calculates the sugar level inside the blood and how much insulin is required for that that will be calculated then after calculating that that will be pumped in the patient's body okay explain the waterfall model with a neat diagram see what's a water mod- uh, waterfall model is um, suppose that you have to develop any product okay for the development of the product you need uh, you need to have a document first in waterfall model mentioning all the requirements which is expected of the product and what is the output okay it means what the product should provide that should be um, uh, made ready first that's the first step okay this one requirements definition after that uh, you have to design the software means uh, you should code it uh, whatever it's uh, required to build the product and then you will test it okay unit testing means each component you will test separately after that you'll uh, com- uh, test the complete system okay system testing then after doing that uh, the product is delivered to the customer and the operation and maintenance is performed means after uh, d- uh, delivering the product to the customer you have to see if the uh, any error happens that time maintenance is required right so that phase is carried out and uh, there is a drawback of the waterfall model uh, that once the requirements uh, see before developing a product the, uh, the customer should provide the requirements of the product and the development starts now if the customer changes Uh, his or her requirements in between the uh, process it's very hard because uh, according to waterfall model you have to go back initially to the first step and start developing again you can't just change the product in the middle of the process okay 
explain Bohm's spiral model with a neat diagram okay what's a Bohm's spiral model in this uh, model what you do is uh, the process uh, the software process is represented as spiral and uh, not as a sequence of activities means each activity will be re uh, repeated in the loop okay then you have to make this diagram see uh, to make this diagram first uh, make four parts and the first one is objective then risk development and plan okay so in objective there uh, you should not mention anything and in the risk part you have to mention the risk analysis this uh, this is risk analysis for each part when you uh, define what's the objective of the product then you will carry uh, then you will see what risk it has means that objectives there will be some side effects or risks that you will uh, analyze and after that you will develop the product means you will design the product code and test it and in the last phase you will plan for the uh, next uh, loop okay there can be many questions asked uh, under this topic requirements engineering process okay th so the first one is what is uh, requirement engineering process for any product you need to have the document list of what all the requirements means uh, the product should contain and what are its um, expected outputs okay so that document is nothing but the requirements engineering uh, document and uh, the process to carry out uh, the writing of this product uh, writing of this uh, document uh, is known as requirement engineering process for developing any product you need to go through the four steps first one is feasibility study means the resources which you have with you are uh, sufficient for the developing uh, development of this product or not that is feasibility uh, that is feasibility study then elicitation and analysis means you will get a general idea of what are the requirements needed for developing this product and then you will specify it with the uh, with the customer means what uh, the, are the requirements you actually need the last one is validation in that uh, the requirements document is created and it will be verified with the customer that uh, these are all the requirements which you need or not okay if not the, the changes will be made accordingly what is requirement elicitation and analysis okay elicitation means you will get to know what are the actual requirements okay that process is known as elicitation and analysis means after writing all of these you'll analyze if the requirements are within your capability to fulfill or not so the first one is requirement discovery means uh, for any product you will discover what are the requirements then you will classify it means uh, some product uh, some requirements will be will have some uh, similarity that will organize it and you will prioritize which is the important requirement and then you will specify it to the customer okay what are functional and non functional requirements so uh, if any product is there like a calculator it uh, calculates the sum of two numbers so that's the functional requirements the function which the product provides is known as functional requirements and uh, non functional uh, requirements is the limit up to which the numbers can be calculated suppose this calculator calculates the numbers up to 100 okay so that uh, limit is known as non functional requirement what are uh, what is software requirements document after getting to know the uh, requirements you will document it in a separate uh, space that's known as software requirement document okay so in the software requirement document uh, the there are few things which is first one is you'll start with a preface it will have the version history and the previous changes made and in introduction part you'll have the um, summary of the product means what the product does and uh, how it uh, provides the value to the business and the glossary will have the technical terms meanings and the user's requirement definition and the system architecture means what are the um, uh, expectations from the user from the product of the product and the system architecture means how the um, product is designed those about that things will, uh, will be mentioning in the system architecture part and system requirements and specifications what are the uh, what are the requirements of the system and the specifications will be mentioned in this chapter and system models means for each requirement you will develop a model presenting the flow of the process used in it and system evolution you will be giving an idea about the changes to be made in the upcoming time if the circumstances change and appendices and index means in this part you will have the alphabetical order uh, of all the um, terms used and the graphs used you can have the index for the graphs and the diagrams and the functions used as well what are the ways to specify the requirements means um, to write the uh, system requirements document there are a few ways the first one is natural language sentences means you will just uh, write you will write the requirements normally okay that's natural language sentences and structured natural language means you will have a format and according to the format you will mention the requirements design description language means you will use a programming approach to write the requirements and the graphical notation means you will draw the models representing the requirements and mathematical specifications means the finite state machine and uh, those concepts will be used to mention the requirements okay 
explain briefly the requirements validation process requirements validation means whatever uh, requirements you have made and documented that uh, validation means you will show it to the customer and the customer will verify it if it's correct or not so that process is having the few steps the first one is it should check for the expected output means it should check that the product is giving the expected output or not the second one is consistency check means there should be no uh, confliction between any of the requirements and the third one is completeness check means all the requirements which the uh, customer needs are being mentioned in the are mentioned in the document or not realism check means whatever the requirements you have developed can it be actually implemented or not that will be checked and verifiability means you will verify it with the customer that the requirements are correct or not explain with example the following terms first one is identity in identity um, so suppose that a company produces two cars the two cars will be having the same color and the same size and everything will be same but these two are still uh, different distinct entities right so that's known as identity the second one is classification means whatever the um, behavior and the data are similar that will be grouped together by vehicle you can develop customized uh, vehicles by the main class you can develop customized vehicles which is car bus and truck it will have all the similar features of the class vehicle so that's known as inheritance the fourth one is polymorphism suppose that the plus sign can be used in if you use numbers the product will be uh, the result will be two if you use in alphabets you'll get the um, you'll get the result as a b what is over development what are the different stages of over development and explain the over themes okay so over development means object oriented development see um, in object oriented development you will um, take in the inputs you will define what are the inputs and what are the expected outputs you will not focus more on how to implement it okay in this way you can think more uh, effectively of the applications rather than um, um, investing your energy on how to implement it okay that will be done in the later stage okay so that's over development to carry out over development the first one is system conception you should have an idea of what system you are developing and analysis means you will add some more details to what the idea is and after that the system design will be uh, made for carrying out the uh, implementation process and the class design will add data and the functions to it it will be translated into the programming language so that it can it can be implemented in the software okay coming to over themes there are six over themes which is the first one is abstraction means you will not um, focus more on how to implement the um, product you will just focus on what are the inputs and what are the expected outputs okay that's known as abstraction and encapsulation means information hiding means what is happening inside the product uh, will be hidden from the um, outside users okay that's encapsulation so in combining data and the behavior you will combine the functions and the data into a single entity and uh, that entity is known as a class okay and inheritance means suppose that uh, there is a car which you like it uh, very much but a uh, particular feature of the car you don't like so what you do is uh, instead of developing the whole car from the scratch what you do is in uh, inheritance what you can do you can uh, take the same uh, copy of this car and then uh, add your own custom feature to it that's known as inheritance and the fourth one and the fifth one is emphasis on the essence of an object means uh, that's the same thing which i mentioned earlier there's a product and you'll uh, focus on what are the inputs and the outputs okay and what the function sh it should perform not how it should perform okay synergy means each of the concepts like identity classification polymorphism these all are separate topics but uh, when they combine together it can be very useful okay so that's uh, synergy explain link and association concepts in over development link, uh, link means there will be specification joe smith works for simplex company means the name of the person and the company is mentioned so that's known as a link but in association you will have the general terms like a person works for a company okay so if you mention in general terms that known as, that's known as association now after writing the definition you have to make this diagram first for the class diagram you will um, make a box and write the class name this is the class name and what the um, data it has it has the data as name okay so similar for the company also the class name is company and the data it has is name okay so you'll write in general terms for the class and in object diagram you'll uh, mention the name of the person okay see john is the um, object of the class person okay and uh, the data which is name is john that will be connected with this company okay the company's name is also given and you have to underline for the object diagram and the name is ge okay similarly you can um, 
write another diagram also for this um, object diagram after doing that you have to write the conventions uh, conventions used in uml so there are many conventions any three or four you can write okay so the first one is link is the name or the line between the object and uh, it is underlined so those things which uh, rules we follow right that uh, that's nothing but the conventions used okay define generalization and inheritance in class modeling so generalization means the similarities and the differences based on these two things the organization will happen okay that's known as generalization in inheritance the superclass will have the main features and the subclasses will inherit from it and add the custom features to it okay so the uml conventions are uh, for generalization you will use a large uh, hollow arrowhead okay which points to the superclass so uh, this is just a simplified uh, diagram of generalization see here the main uh, class is equipment okay in this equipment uh, these parts you will have these things okay and this is generalization these all three things have something in common and they are at the same level okay so that's generalization and the inheritance means from the equipment you have um, inherited pump heat exchanger and tank okay so these three things are inherited from this class so similarly you will have the next level of generalization and similarly for the last level also of generalization you will have these three things okay that was for generalization for inheritance you have to draw this diagram see in this diagram uh, figure is the main class means you will have many figure set 1d figure 2d figure and 3d figure such things uh, those all are figure set the main class is figure so inside the figure you will have the um three categories 0 1 and 2 dimension from the main class you have to show that some classes are the subclasses are inheriting the features and adding their own uh, custom features to it okay that's the main thing which you have to depict uh, by using a diagram explain the class window system model so basically what is a window system model see whenever you open your laptop you can uh, in your screen whatever you see is nothing but a window okay that so there can be many um things inside this window like scrolling window canvas and panel so let's discuss one by one scrolling window means uh, if you open your notepad in your screen you will have uh, if you type uh, text till the end then uh, that scrolling option comes right that's a scrolling window okay you can either text or scroll then canvas suppose that you open your paint okay the paint app in your laptop and that's known as a canvas and inside that you can have many shapes 1d or 2d shapes or draw or um, edit the things so those things are coming under the canvas and the final is panel suppose that you open your browser inside your browser uh, inside your browser you will have uh, many options like uh, to perform different operations on the screen okay that's known as the panel and uh, in the panel see here button choice and text item see if you want to uh, enter any text in the search bar of the uh, web page okay that's uh, that comes under text item and choice means um, application of this um, choosing options okay from the web page explain the context model using the example of mhc pms okay so um, the context model is nothing but see mhc pms uh, is a mental health care patient management system so uh, it's a system which can uh, record the patient's uh, data admission and uh, prescriptions appointments statistics management uh, reports okay so this is the uh, this is the context of the main thing which is mental health care patient management system so in this you can have uh, as many features as you want and include it into the system okay so you have to start uh, you have to explain this using a uml diagram see in this uh, a patient is there and the detention of that patient that decision is made so the first step is you'll inform the patient's uh, family members that the patient is being um, detained from the hospital and the record of the detention is made in the register then the second step is if the patient is not dangerous to the society you will admit it uh, you will admit him or if the pa patient is dangerous to the society you will uh, transfer the patient to the police station if uh, the secure place is not available if it's available then you will transfer the patient to the hospital then the last step is you will inform the uh, social care means the rel um, people who are concerned about him and the uh, relatives and update the register in it okay so you'll all, uh, do all of these th uh, th uh, three things in the last step and that will end the process explain the patient information system using the sequence diagram firstly there will be a medical receptionist who needs the data of the patient okay so what he does is you will uh, he will call the 
uh, object patient info so uh, patient info will return the uh, patient's information how it will be carried out is first the patient info will send the uh, request to the database okay where the information is stored so the database will uh, return the information of the patient and that will be sent to the medical receptionist okay before sending that it is um, important that uh, authorization check should be made means the person who is requesting it is authorized to access the information or not that will be done first then the database from the database that information will be sent to patient info object and that uh, it will return to medical receptionist okay so below this diagram it's uh, just the same thing if the authorization is okay the patient info will be returned otherwise it will be shown as error and no access okay in case the authorization fails explain generalization and aggregation in generalization you will have the similar things in the same place in a single group that's known as generalization and in um, aggregation the patient record is composed of two objects first one is patient and the consultation means a patient record will have all the names of the patients and what are the consultation uh, information about each of the patient okay so since it's uh, divided into two parts so that uh, two parts will be mentioned as uh, separate entities okay that's known as aggregation this is the most repeated topic in the previous papers explain the working of microwave oven okay so firstly how to make this diagram make six circles here okay after making all of this, you'll make one circle here and one circle here, okay? And uh, you'll start from here. You'll wait for some time and you'll set the power. Means full power means 600 watts and half power means 300 watts, okay? After uh, setting the power, you'll set the timer and after setting in the time, you'll on the uh, you'll on the microwave. Means you'll close the door and if it's um, enabled, then it will start the operation. Else, if the microwave uh, if the microwave oven has some issues, at that time the door will be uh, not closed it will be disabled the operation will not happen okay in case the error is rectified at that time the door will be closed and the uh, operation will begin and you will wait until the operation gets over and uh, that ends the state diagram okay after that you have to um, explain the same thing which i have uh, told just now in your own words and after that you have to write this state and stimulus di uh, stimulus table okay in this uh, you will mention each state means waiting half power full power set time what does it do okay that you can write it in uh, write it in your own words and after writing the state uh, table you have to write the stimulus table okay in stimulus table what does half power do the user has pressed the half power button like that only you have to write till uh, for all these things okay what is model driven engineering explain the three abstract uh, system models okay so what is uh, model driven engineering is you will have the models okay that will uh, show the flow of the um, process okay that's model driven engineering and in the model uh, driven engineering you will not include more details so that's an advantage you can think freely about the um, ideas and uh, without uh, being more concerned about the details okay and it can be developed as a platform independent model means uh, uh, for the developing uh, for the development of a product you will not worry about the language to be used you will just focus on what the idea of the product is and against md is uh, due to the lack of details uh, there is a chance that you can use uh, you will be using a off the shelf product means uh, existing or old products which are not that much effective so by using that you can lose efficiency and uh, the performance of the system so some details are uh, necessary for developing a effective product so the three uh, abstract types of the system model is computational computation independent model in this model you will have the abstraction of the data used in the uh, inside the model okay that data will be not uh, shown in much detail that is computation uh, independent model in the second model platform independent model means uh, you will not specify which language you are using for the uh, product and uh, you will just uh, mention what's the idea of the what's the idea behind the product okay and uh, platform specific model in this you will specify what language you are using and that uh, language will not be mentioned in the detail it will be translated afterwards okay but the language will be specified so for making this diagram you will uh, write the names of the three model first computation platform independent platform specific and executable code and for each of these you have to, uh, you have to use a translator and in uh, the last part you'll have the guidelines and the patterns so this is for the multiple platform specific models okay so firstly you will have an idea and you will use a translator to translate the idea into a programming uh, programmable language and you will uh, use the syntax and uh, specify the model and then you will generate the code okay 
code generator by using a code generator then you will get the final code okay explain briefly the main phases of uh, rational unified process okay so in uh, rup what's the process used are uh, from three perspectives first one is dynamic perspective in this you will just show the phases of the model over time in the second one static perspective you will show the uh, process activities which are being enacted in the third one practice perspective means you will suggest some good practices which are to be used inside the process okay so you have to make this diagram the first step is inception in this you will make a mind map of what your idea is and in the second step you will elaborate that idea and in the third step construction part you will uh, use your uh, uh, technical skills and the existing codes and uh, technologies to develop the product and the uh, transition phase is if there is a uh, requirement for the evolution of the product you will uh, do that in the final phase and after the product is developed you will um, repeat the same process uh, to make the product more better explain the weather, uh, weather station working with a sequence diagram okay so in uh, weather station um, there will be a weather station which will have the information okay of what are the uh, weathers uh, in the different parts of the uh, world okay so uh, this is the satellite okay now what happens is first the uh, if the weather station needs the information of any of these uh, things it will send the uh, signal that it needs the information and the satellite will uh, uh, point to the uh, location where the information is present and this will send the information back to the satellite which will be transferred to the weather information system okay that's the sequence diagram uh, that you have mentioned first you will request okay the information system will request to the sat comms and that will uh, send the report to the weather station and to get the summary and uh, summarize the weather data these two objects are used these two objects comms link and the weather data is used and they will send the summary to the um, satcoms and the satcoms will uh, send the uh, summary to the information system okay and you have to mention each of these phases okay that's the same thing which i have mentioned and write it in your own words and mention and explain uh, uh, each step okay define design patterns and explain the four essential elements of design patterns okay so design pattern is nothing but uh, essence of the solution suppose that uh, there is a information to be transferred from this part of the world to the other part of the world okay so that can be done by using the radio waves okay so that can be done by using the radio waves so the radio waves are the essence of the solution okay so it uh, does not so it does not uh, mention that what are the um, objects used to um, generate the radio waves and what are the objects used to receive the uh, radio waves okay so that's the essence of the solution the same solution can be applied in different fields okay so that's a design pattern and in uh, design pattern you will have the four things first one is name and the description solution and the statement okay so see here so whatever your solution for a particular problem is that should uh, have a name and the description of what's the problem and the problem will be described in more detail in third row and the solution of that problem will be described here and finally what are the uh, consequences or the side effects that can uh, come by applying this solution uh, will be mentioned in the last part okay what is open source development so um, before the internet um, whatever the product was uh, being developed that product will be freely available to the public to use it or to make it more better okay so that's known as open source development and after the coming of the internet it uh, became much more popular because the uh, access became more easier okay so anyone can access these codes and make it more better or use for their own purpose so there are three types of it um, to use open source there are three types of licensing first one is general public license okay in this general public license if you use a open source under the license then you must make the uh, software also open source so suppose that you uh, use the software which is of open source so under this license if you use that software that means whatever product you make from uh, using this software that product should also be made open source okay so that's the first one gnu the second one is gnu lesser general public license okay in this you will have the um, same thing which was in the first case but uh, you will have uh, no obligation to publish the code which you um, you uh, which you develop by using this software okay so the last one is also a similar thing the code will be available in the public and if you make any changes to the code you need not um, publish that uh, changed codes uh, in, into the open source community okay that's known as berkeley standard distribution 
there are few rules which the companies uh, managing the project using open source should follow first one is they should educate people about the different types of licenses used and understand how a company uh, license should be um, used means what are the different types of rules with uh, each license that the company must educate to the different people the second one is establish a establish a system for maintaining the information so whatever the source code you are using that information must be documented separately and the third one is participate in the open source community this is the most repeated topic in the module 4 which is list and explain briefly the uh, six stages of acceptance testing so what is acceptance testing suppose that a product is made okay so now the pro uh, after the developers make a product that should be shown to the customer so the customer can either accept or uh, reject the product okay so that um, before accepting or rejecting there are few steps which will be followed the first one is define acceptance criteria means on what criteria will the um, product be accepted or rejected that will be defined after doing that the uh, the plan of the uh, acceptance testing will be made means uh, to test a product what are the things you need and when you will test it and where you will test it and how the testing will be carried out that will be done and after planning that you will derive the acceptance tests and you will run those tests and see if the product um, if the product passes or fails in these tests it's very unlikely that the product will be 100% efficient so it's um, so the negotiation will be carried out and uh, it's up to the customer that uh, the customer rejects or accepts the system okay what is software evolution process and what are its fundamental activities okay so when time comes to upgrade the software you have to upgrade it and to upgrade it there is a way means there are few steps to be followed in upgrading that's known as software evolution process okay so what are its fundamental activities firstly you will identify what changes is to be done and you will uh, find the solution for it and then you will apply that solution and uh, make the uh, changes and you will deliver the new system to the customers okay so the first step is um, whenever you have to change something you will analyze the cost and impact of these changes means how much it will cost to change the to make the change and what are the impact means if you change the product um, what are the changes uh, means what are the benefits you will get and what are the side effects uh, which will happen okay so if the benefits are more than the side effects then you will move on to the next step or else you will uh, try to rectify it and uh, make some other changes okay which are not having much side effects that changes you will focus on and uh, if you make any changes what are the uh, see if uh, this is the product and this is the environment of the product and some components are dependent on this product okay so if if you have to change this product you have to consider the changes which will be uh, happening with these products as well okay so those changes will be ke uh, kept in mind and you, you will move on further uh, upgrading the product or um, upgrading the product or not okay or you will carry out the further research the first one is continuing change means a product which is uh, present in the real world me, uh, must keep on changing or else it will become progressively less uh, useful okay the second one is increasing complexity uh, if you add in new features it will uh, make the product more complex so an investment should be made to make the uh, to keep the product simple that can be done by using the preventive maintenance okay see the third one fourth one and the fifth one these three have the similar meaning means um, there is a product and the changes uh, happen uh, and the changes being made to the product are uh, almost constant in every increment okay so that's what the third fourth and the fifth law the fifth law says and coming to the sixth one continuing uh, continuing growth this uh, this is the same as the first one which is the um, product should be uh, kept on developing more and more so to uh, stay relevant in the uh, real world and the seventh one is declining quality which means the product's quality will be declined if they are not uh, modified to reflect the changes in the environment okay the last one is feedback system so feedback systems can uh, help you to achieve more improvement explain software reengineering process means uh, if there is a product and uh, that product has become old so what you can do is you can re-engineer that product means um, re-documenting and refactoring the system and translating the programs uh, to the modern programming language and modifying and updating the structure and the values of the system data okay by using all these things you can make the product more uh, efficient you can re-engineer the product at a much lower cost uh, than uh, developing a new product okay 
the source code of the original program is uh, analyzed and a more modern um, version of it is made by using a more modern uh, programming language and uh, after the source code translation the second step is reverse engineering and program structure improvement in reverse engineering you document all the functions used inside the program and in program structure improvement you will make the program more eff uh, efficient by using more effective control structures and the uh, um, algorithms after that uh, the next step is program modularization in this you will uh, group the similar features of the program in a single entity and the in the form of modules and after that you will use the re-engineered program and the original data to carry out the task of data re-engineering that means you will update the existing databases and uh, make use of new databases uh, which are more efficient and finally you will have the re-engineered data so by using this process you will get a better uh, program at the last okay what is software maintenance what are the three different types of software maintenance see software maintenance is nothing but the process of changing the system after it has been delivered okay to maintain the software okay that process is known as software maintenance now there are three different types of software maintenance in uh, three cases the software maintenance can arise the first one is fault uh, fault repairs so in the code if you have the errors inside the code that's known as coding errors and the design errors means the improving the overall structure of the code and the last one is the requirements errors okay so if there are any changes in the requirements um, with the time so those changes are to be made the those come under the requirement errors okay so all these three come under fault repairs the next one is environmental adaption so there's a product and the environment of this product changes so to adapt it to the environment you have to make changes to this uh, product that is known as environmental adaption then next comes the functionality addition this is the most costliest um, change in this functionality addition the code is the code of the program is uh, modified to add a new functionality to it so it's uh, most co uh, most costliest because the the, because the changes made in one part of the program might affect the other part of the program so to minimize the changes happening in the other part of the program due to one part of the program requires uh, requires a lot of manual work and uh, so it's the most costliest uh, modification it's uh, usually it's usually most uh, more expensive to add functionality after the system is in operation than to implement the same during the development this means that uh, once the product is developed to add functionality after the developed product uh, it's more costlier than adding the functionality during its development uh, development process okay uh, this is due to two reasons so the first reason is team stability so suppose that this product uh, was developed and it was delivered to the customers now these people will be moving on to the next projects in different areas okay so after that uh, um, the maintenance team will take up this pro product and um, take up the uh, responsibility of maintaining it so firstly the maintain uh, maintenance team needs to know the functionalities of this um, product means it uh, needs to understand understand the product completely before making any changes to it so that's uh, costlier since it takes a lot of uh, person efforts okay and the uh, second one is staff skills means the new maintenance team which is undertaking this uh, product will have no uh, will have less knowledge about the product so it will become very hard for them to um, make changes to it because of the less knowledge regarding this object uh, regarding this product okay explain test driven development test driven development means where the product is being when the product is being developed at the same time when you add a new, uh, new functionality to it at that time only that uh, test will be carried out for this particular function which is added so what happens is uh, when you add each functionality the test is being carried out so at finally you will uh, at the final stage it will not be necessary to carry out the test once again for the whole product since you have uh, tested each pro each uh, function when uh, when it was added so that's the benefit of test driven development and uh, the process is simple when you make a product you will start step by step you will write a part of the code and test it if, if it works then you will move on to the next step and you will add it uh, with the second function okay then you will test this both whole together okay then uh, the another advantage of this is if the error happens uh, while you test both of these together 
when you tested this it was okay and when you added this and tested this hole the error happened right so the error is mostly present in this part so it will be much more easier for you to identify and uh, correct the errors what is legacy system management explain its types okay so legacy system management means there's a old um, business product which is uh, there's a old product which is being used in the business and it can be of four types it can be of uh, low quality and low business value means the product is of low quality means uh, much money is required to make the product work and the business value which you get from it is also less okay in that case the product should be scrapped and a new product should be purchased in the second case uh the product quality is low but the business value is high okay so much uh, money is needed for the working of this uh, product but the business value which you get is very high okay so in this case the, the product should be improved because it provides a high business value in the third case high business value and high uh, quality it means the product requires a very less a very less investment of the money but and the output is uh, very high business value okay so you'll get a high business value by using this product and the uh, um, investment upon this uh, product is also very less because it's of high quality so the normal maintenance should be continued in the final case the product quality is high but the business value is low okay you need not spend much uh, money on this product and the output which you get from it is um, of low low business okay so either you can maintain the product okay uh, since you're getting a uh, part of the business or uh, you can either uh, scrap it in case you're planning for uh, purchase of a new product explain the following terms first one is development testing development testing means the testing is carried out uh, during the development process that's known as development testing inside the development testing there are three parts which is unit testing component testing and system testing so that means when you have developed a unit you test it individually so that's known as unit testing and component testing means you will combine all the units together and make it as a single component and test this component okay so that's known as uh, component testing similarly a uh, combination of many components together form a system this system will be tested after combining all these components that's known as system testing release testing means after you have developed a product the um, another team which uh, carries out the release testing will uh, test the product Uh, if it's of good or bad quality then user testing means the customers or the end users will be given the product to uh, test it and give the feedback if it's uh, if it works for them or uh, if it's uh, useful for them or not factors affecting uh, software pricing the first one is market opportunity suppose that there is a new business and there is a high competition going on in the market and th- what the market does is the new what the new um, business does is it reduces the cost of its product so that the people will recognize uh, this new business and come to it so that it uh, enters the um, market okay so that can affect the price of the software okay the second one is cost estimate uncertainty means uh, there's a new person in the market and he doesn't know what's the actual cost of the product so according to his own uh, assumption he sets a price so it can be very high or very low that can affect the uh, cost of the software contractual term uh, terms means uh, the developer will give the code to the customer but uh, it will uh, but the developer will not give the ownership of this code okay so in that case the code can be given to the customer at a lower price since the ownership is uh, still with the developer that's contractual terms if the requirements validity is likely to be changed in the upcoming time the the developer uh, will sell the code at a lower price to the customer and fix the contract after that the requirement when it changes uh, it will increase the uh, prices for the changes to be made inside the code okay so that's uh, requirement validity and it affects the uh, cost of the software the last point is financial health if uh, the developers fin- uh, developer is in financial difficulty at that time they can lower their price to gain a contract from uh, contract uh, even for a small profit okay so because of financial difficulty the software uh, software price can be varied 
so these are some of the factors due to which the uh, software's price will uh, change what is algorithmic cost modeling or what is kokomo 2 model explain the different types of it okay so first one is uh, what is algorithmic cost modeling um, algorithmic cost modeling is a mathematical formula based on the previous projects which were made uh, by using those data a formula is made that formula gives an idea of the approximate cost of um, building that project okay building a project and the kokomo 2 model is a model which is developed by using the uh, previous completed projects so there are four types of it the first one is application composition model in application composition model you will uh, develop a product uh, you will develop a product based on the existing components okay so in that case a formula is used by using some information about uh, the products you will calculate the approximate cost the second one is early design model in this case you will have the requirement document and by using this data you will calculate the approximate cost in reuse model if you are uh, reusing a existing component what will be the cost needed to uh, implement the changes in it okay so that uh, cost um, that cost approximation is given by reuse model the fourth one is post architectural model in this uh, the information is uh, already with you regarding the resources and the persons needed and the cost is calculated this is the most detailed of the kokomo 2 models okay write a short note on reviews and inspections reviews and inspections are nothing but uh, they are the process by which you will check the quality of the product and find if there are any errors in the product or not so the first one is review process it's a more general process and in the review process you will uh, go through the product and you will find out if any errors is there or not or if it's of low quality those things will be checked okay so in the review process there are three phases first one is pre review activity in pre review activity we will plan when the uh, meeting should be done with the developer for the for the review testing so uh, after you have made a plan you will go and uh, do the meeting with the developer it uh, it will be very short and the developer will go through the uh, walk through the document of the product and the people in the review team will check if the product is uh, good or not and after that the post review activities means if there are any uh, errors arise in the um, product that will be rectified okay that's a review process in the inspection process the checklist will be there see there will be a checklist um, by which the things which are needed to be verified will be written and the product will be compared based on those uh, points okay after that if any error uh, if any error arises that will be addressed um, by using appropriate techniques and the developer will be given suggestions on how to improve the product okay what are product and process standards okay product standards means what are the standards the product must follow to ensure that it's a good product and the pro uh, and the process which the pro uh, the standards which the process must follow while developing the um, product is known as process standards write a short note on software component analysis so first you have to write what is software component analysis it means that uh, in the software product you will have many components so we will um, select each component and check uh, for its quality that's known as software component analysis so for uh, carrying out that we will follow some uh, key stages the first one is choose the measurements to be made means um, for the product what call it, uh, what measurement you are going to make on that means are you checking the speed of it or the performance or the space it takes or how efficient it is which uh, measurement are you going to make that will be chosen first after that on which component you are going to make that measurement will be chosen and uh, the analysis will be carried out and uh, observations will be written okay and after that you will compare these observations with the previous observations you have made and the changes are noticed after comparing it with, uh, it with the previous one if there is any change in this um, analysis that change will be addressed first if it's uh, due to an error that error will be rectified okay